Welcome once again to Breakfast Central. Now let's take you through the newspapers this Thursday morning, the 23rd of um, November. I almost forgot what, day, what month it was. It was starting on the Daily Trust this morning to share with you the big stories making headlines. It says here, Appeal Court insists on Governor Yusuf Sack admits errors in certified judgment. Protest Rock Kano. NNPP approaches Supreme Court, rejects re uh, request for CTC retrieval. Uh, judgment read in court, more important, says the APC. Contradictory verdict, embarrassing, scandalous, says you, Yadudu Falana. Um, and they're not the only ones who have said the same thing. I did see someone yesterday mention that the courts are, are meant, like across the world, right? The courts are meant to be the place where people find, you know, some level of justice, sol solitude, calm. They bring basically some calmness to whatever challenges that people face, you know, because, you know, regardless of whether you're the accuser or the accused, the, the courts are meant to be that place where you go to. And at the end of the day, everyone is satisfied with, you know, somehow, some way satisfied with the, you know, judgment. They bring calm. But the Nigerian judiciary and the Nigerian courts in the last few months seem to have caused more chaos than even, you know, the initial challenges that they had to sort out. Um, and yes, you know, these are things that we will continue to x-ray, you know, which is more important. The APC is saying the judgment read in court is more important than the certified true copy of the, of the judgment. The di disposition, is it deposition or disp deposition that was given by the judge? Um, uh, so it's a little confusing and hopefully we get someone who can speak on these things uh, this morning. We also, of course, will need to ask um, if, you know, they would be thinking about a further appeal and how, or what it would feel like if after get receiving a certified true copy of a judgment, they are asking you to bring it back so that they can, you know, change the judgment that you've been given. Even when you've been awarded um, um, damages, it, you know, uh, and of course the accuser was asked to pay a millionaire in damages. But anyway. Missing Radio Tower, NSCDC takes responsibility, begins investigations. That's interesting to see that a Radio Tower can go missing. Oshun Governor Nock for failing to hold cabinet meetings. Her army and police clash led to inspector's death in Adamawa. Also, 25 killed in Niger road crash. We can also find here Nasarawa gubernatorial debate. Appeal court delivers judgment today. A dispute, I beg your pardon. Ondo in coma as Akira Dulu hangs on to power. There's been a lo loads of criticism as to how fit, you know, Governor Rotimi Akira Dulu is since he returned from his uh, medical leave in, I believe, Germany or so. Um, you know, it doesn't seem like he's been able to be fully back in office and back to work. He, there's not very many pictures of him or videos of him, you know, at work. So um, it, it is worrisome for the people of Ondo State. And of course, there's been calls that he maybe hands over power to his deputy, uh, you know, who might be healthier. And you cannot blame anybody who says that because, you know, if you don't seem to be physically fit enough, to handle the, the, the role of being a governor of a state, then you may as well just hand it over. But that's not a very common thing to expect from, you know, the average Nigerian politician that will cling on to power, you know, even on their sick beds. Um, so we'll see, you know, good luck to the people of Ondo State. Let's move away from the Daily Trust this morning to the punch. We very likely would uh, share similar stories, uh, you know, um, just like on the Daily uh, Trust. Yeah, exactly. So let's move away from here to the... Daily Trust newspaper, and on the front page of the uh, Punch newspaper, I beg your pardon. Cano poll controversy, we have the police, NP, NNPP protesters clash. More cloud over judgment. Court APC blame clerical error. NNPP Labour Party insists the judgment was doctored. And um, we also have here Yusuf's, Yusuf Heads for Supreme Court says appeal court lacks jurisdiction to determine party membership. We also do have Fintiri intervenes as soldiers kill inspector in Adamawa. Senate passes MTEF to probe tax waivers under Buhari. Will the probing actually work? We hope that the, you know, the probing is quite detailed and, and brings out all that needs to be brought up. Police tear gas protesters and shield Oshun CJ from mall. That's not looking good. 1.2 billion air fraud. It may fail it gets 300 million air bill restricted to Abuja. Now, this story, this Emefiele saga is starting to look very suspicious. You know, quite suspicious. And I, I really don't see how this is going to end. You know, I, I, I don't understand it. Nijay Hunter sues Tinubu 
ECOWAS and cut rules on the 7th of December. Fresh Naira scarcity hits Kano's, Sokoto, Edo, others. Can Nigerians just get a break? Can we breathe? One day we're talking about... I heard about it. I started scarcity. hearing about it about a week ago uh, from people in Benin that there seemed to be a Naira scarcity once again. Um, and I think we're also starting to see that, you know, not just uh, in Benin, starting to spread across, you know, other places. So, yes, fresh Naira scarcity hits Kando, Sokoto, Edo and others, which is shameful because, you know, how do you not have your currency? How do you, how do you not have Naira? You just, you, you imagine going to Ghana and they say, oh, we don't have any CDs. How, what, what, how does that even make sense? And this is after the central bank governor had tried out a Naira redesign policy that failed woefully. And of course, you know, I, I don't know, you know, why nobody still has been fired or, you know, jailed because for the failure policy. of that thing. Yes. And that's why the they Naira are, redesign policy. That's probably why they are still holding them a failure. That's probably one of the things. It's not. It's not been charged with anything like that. But the point is, you know, that policy failed. Nobody was questioned. Nobody, you know, answered for the crimes of that policy and what it did to Nigerians and, the, the, you know, the, the, the pain and the suffering that put Nigerians through for about two months. Nobody answered for those things. So what what is the federal government, you know, saying now that is our the current state of the, the, the Naira? How many notes are currently in circulation? Are we still meant to be using the old notes or the new notes? They said, yes, that the old notes are still in circulation. The December deadline that they had placed, you know, is cancelled and you can continue using it. So it means that we accept. We, so all the we suffering accept. that we suffered exactly. was just for a waste. Yeah. But I'll choose that. I'll choose it being, you know, shifted further than us relieving the trauma that we went through. It was such a traumatic time. Well, no, but then. nobody wants to relieve, relieve yeah. it. But n now that we're back to hearing stories of narrow scarcity, um, is there any reason for it? Well, it's you just know. the apprehension, people remembering that the CBN had said that we'll transition to the new Naira notes by December. So people are just trying to maybe over withdraw to prevent issues of what happened last year and reoccurring well, this year. Well, I think it's been cancelled. Well, so that's why we need to talk more about it to let them know that there isn't right. any transition to the new currency notes, so you can continue to use your old currency notes. Final story, federal government slashes wage award by 100 billion Naira labor kicks. And that's all on the punch. All right, let's move away from the punch newspapers this morning. Sad story there with the police inspector killed in um, Adamawa. Daily Sun, Oshu, Edo, Anambra, Kano, top 2023 electoral offenders list. That's very interesting. 187 lawyers, 16 SANs to begin prosecution of suspects. 1,076 arrested in 35 states. It will be nice to follow through um, with these uh, proceedings and this, you know, these, um, the prosecution basically, and see where it leads, see what they will be charged with, see what the, you know, sentences will be found guilty. I know that electoral offenses, you know, on the average, you know, uh, have uh, between six months and I think two years, maybe five years, jail term with the option of fine in, in many of the cases also. So we'll see how these things turn out and, you know, if people will actually be charged and we'll have to, um, pay these fines or go to jail, and if this will truly serve as a deterrent for next um, elections in Nigeria. Fuel, we have supply, we have supply to last beyond Christmas, Kiari Tell Senate. Akbabi pledges support to NNPC Limited. And also this morning on the Daily Sun, federal government moves to unblock $300 billion uh, in deed capital via land reforms. From a CBN governor, MFL gets 300 million Naira bail. Kano gubernatorial NNPP protests urges NJC to review court rulings. Court declares Buhari's appointment of FCC's chairman secretary uh, unlawful. And also Nigeria facing its worst economic crisis, uh, say reps. Okay. I don't think that's breaking news. I think every single Nigerian knows, both the rich and the poor and the politicians. Um, I think everybody knows it's not breaking news. I'm not sure why they, they you know, need to remind us. But these are the big stories. And once again, I think the major one here, you know, the most captivating one is the Oshu and Anam, Oshu Edu Anambra Kano topping list of 2023 electoral offenders list. Shocking because, you know, I know that in Lagos here, there was a ton of people who, you know, allegedly committed, you know, electoral offenses, you know, disenfranchising voters, including those who were threatening voters from coming out, you know, to vote and exercise their franchise. And, of course, those who committed violence against, you know, voters, those who went to scatter, you, you know, uh, polling units um, and destroy uh, um, election um, um, uh, material. A lot of that happened in Lagos. So I'm now trying to imagine what level it was on 
if Oshu and Edu and Anambra and Kano have more than what happened in Lagos. It's very interesting. These are the stories on the Daily Sun. Quickly, let's go to the Guardian newspapers this morning. It says here, poor funding raises concerns for 270 new private varsities. More universities, less research output and quality. And also, total number of universities may rise to 528, among which 418 are private owned. Uh, between 2018 and 2022, over 6 or 5 million candidates who applied for admission were unable to secure placement. Also, out of 1.8 million candidates who applied in 2022, about 600,000 representing 33.3% were admitted. Uh, just giving statistics, you know, on the status of Nigerian universities and, you know, the, um, um, the ability of, you know, these facilities to cater for the number of students that it is uh, taking in. Um, and of course, should maybe also give you an idea of what the quality of education would be that these students would get. Once again, poor funding raises concerns for 270 new private varsities. Tension in Kano over gubernatorial verdict as a Dulu Ayedatiwa crisis rocks Ondo. Senate laments cyber threats to digital economy, $500 million yearly loss. Court grants MFLA 300 million Naira bill, orders CBN to update CSO on E Naira. Okay. And also, Governor Fubara opens two world class health facilities. It'll be interesting to see what exactly world class means um, in River State. Over 200 billion naira exchange rate differential pushes FAAC disbursement to 906.96 billion naira. Adelabu, evasion safety and uh, profligacy of uh, public officials. Um, these are the big stories on The Guardian this morning. And these are the stories that we can share this time um, across the newspapers here in Nigeria on a Thursday morning. Thank you very much for joining us. Remember to always be eager or remember to always tweet at us if you have views on any of the stories that we are sharing at New Central TV. Let us know your thoughts on these stories. And we, of course, will be eager to you know, put them on live television. Mm -hmm.